In this example, we will engage in the same process, factoring the numerator and denominator of our rational function, looking for those restricted values of the domain, seeing which ones we are able to simplify out, and identifying which one which of those restricted values will produce a hole in the graph and which of those restricted values will produce a vertical asymptote. For the sake of simplification, despite the fact that the denominator is going to be much more important to the domain than the numerator, we're just gonna go ahead and factor the whole thing. We see a common factor of 10 in the numerator. And in the denominator, that's a four term polynomial begging to be factored by grouping. So we take x squared out of the first group, leaving behind an x plus 5. And remember, when you look at your second group, you want to make sure that you match the inside of that binomial that was formed in the first group. So in order to get that to match, we're going to have to use minus 4 as our common factor, or negative 4. Continuing the factorization, we have 10 times x plus 2. Common binomial of x plus 5 leftover terms of x squared minus 4. And despite the fact that we think we might be finished, we are not. Because of the role that difference of squares plays in our factoring, we can take one more step and finish it with an x minus 2, x plus 2. For us, we look at the denominator of where the domain is going to be restricted. We have domain restrictions at negative 5, at 2, and at negative 2. Those are our candidates for the holes or removable discontinuities and the asymptotes. We see the common factor of x plus 2 from the numerator and the denominator. Nothing else in common to simplify, meaning our final simplified form of a of x is 10 over x plus 5, x minus 2. The fact that these are both left over at the end tell us that we're going to have vertical asymptotes at x is equal to negative 5 and x is equal to 2. And the fact that I canceled or simplified this factor out means that that factor, or excuse me, that restriction minus negative 2, that's where we're going to have a whole. So vertical asymptotes at x is equal to negative 5 and x is equal to 2, a whole at x is equal to negative 2. And again, if I want to sub that number in to the final simplified form of the polynomial, I can figure out that my whole is going to be at the point negative 2, negative 5, 6, which is the result of that substitution. So make sure you factor everything out. If I stopped here, it would look like everybody was going to be a vertical asymptote because I didn't have any simplification done with the x plus 2. But I'm careful with the difference of squares. I hit that one last simplification, creating a whole and two vertical asymptotes.